the genetic improvement in medicinal aromatic plants status scope and constraints so friends first of all let me thank the authorities the professor and head of this department the director the major guide of the student as well as the authorities of this very esteemed university to invite me here as a external examiner as well as to arrange this guest lecture so that i can share my views as far as the medicinal aromatic plants are concerned so i am very much thankful to all so friends uh we all know that presently there are n number of the factors by which the human health it has come under numerous challenges if we look at the number of the health issues or problems the way the graph has elevated it has raised in the last two decades let us suppose if you take an example of tension muscular dystrophy you take an example of cystic fibrosis you take an example of parkinson you take an example of alzheimers you take an example of hypertension diabetes you take the example of schizophrenia a number of the disorders their incidence it has got very much increased and there are n type of the factors which are associated with that which may include the sedentary lifestyle which may include the feeding habits which may include the more pressure more stress level on on all the what we can say people whether these are students or these are some where working professionals and beside this the climate change a number of the diseases a number of the insect pests their strains they have emerged out and as far as the natural resources are concerned they are diminishing let us take when we talk about the total land area of this globe it is about 13 billion hectare so out of this only 11% of the area it is cultivable so out of that area also near about 3 million of 3 million hectare of the land area it gets reduced every year due to erosion due to pollution due to so called urbanization buildings roads construction so that way if we'll talk about the accessibility of the food now most of the people in most of the countries in this globe they have a accessibility to the food but still there is a problem of the hidden hunger there is a problem of the malnutrition the people they are getting they have a accessibility of the food but the food is not nutrient the food it is not nutritious right so all these things what we can say incidence of such what we can say problems whether these are related to health now globally there is a very huge paradigm shift there is a very huge shift in the belief system of the people to transfer their mode of medication from the allopathic to the natural resources to the plant system and in this particular regard india has one of the very richest heritage if we we'll look at the ayurveda if we we'll look at the homeopathy if we we'll look at the what we can say siddha this type of the systems which have been evolved from from thousands of the years right even even charak sahita also i mean these are what we can say very important and now in fact if you look at the overall globally if you look at the major exporters for such medicinal aromatic plants india ranks second after china india ranks second after china and most even if you look at the compound annual growth rate it is more of india than the 
China. In case of India, if you look at for the past last five years, it is near about six percent. Whereas in case of China, it is minus point three. It is minus point three means it has got decreased. Right. So this way, what I mean to say, India, as far as this particular global herbal market is concerned, India sees this. India should see this a very huge opportunity. to explore as well as to what we can say to explore the global market as well as to proceed in such a manner so that we can increase our export level by enhancing the quality of the products by enhancing the diversification of the quality and that to when i'm comparing the two Best exporter are the two exporter who are doing the maximum export, China and India. So, if you look at the type of the export or the type of the trade which the India is having, it is far far better than the China. Because in case of China, China is exporting to the very nearby countries like uh, Indonesia, like uh, what we can say uh, Vietnam, like Japan. But as far as the India is concerned. most of the export share of india it goes to either us it goes to the european union especially the germany united kingdom right so that way uh, what we can say the reach of the indian export it has got globally uh, what we can say at at a very superior level so friends uh these are the things which i'll be talking about right so first of all when we start from this we must know that uh, here i'll be talking about medicinal and aromatic plants so just uh, uh, for the knowledge uh, medicinal plants these are those particular plants which are used for some therapeutic purpose right they have some therapeutic value and as a result we use such plants or any of their parts organs which can be considered as the precursors for the medication medicines right so that is about the medicinal plants when we talk about the aromatic plants these are the type of the plants which are generally grown are used for the aromatic substances those those may be what we can say having some odor they may be aroma they may be fragrance right so these are the type of uh, i mean uh, aromatic uh, aromatic plants they are the type of uh, this type of the plants so friends as already i was talking about that the global market size of the herbal sector uh, if you look at the overall uh, what we can say trade so it was Uh, six six hundred fifty seven point five billion US dollar in two thousand twenty, which has touched seven hundred forty six point nine billion by two thousand twenty. What I mean to emphasize here, the way the CAG, the way it is growing, it is enormous. According to Fortune Business Insights, the global herbal medicine market is projected to grow from one hundred sixty five point six six billion USD in two thousand twenty two. to 347.50 billion dollar by 2029 so that is to at a cag cagr of 11.16% china and india as i told you they are considered to be the two major exporters of maps across globe accounting for around 25.65 and 17.25% of the total exported value of the maps while china registered a cagr of uh, minus point 36% in the export of maps right at the same time india recorded a cgr of 6.14% so the existing trade pattern demands demonstrates a clear difference between the structure of india and china with respect to the map sector as i told you that the china it is mostly exporting to the countries like japan hong kong south korea whereas uh, india its most of the export it goes to some of the european countries or us or some others so this this is in fact uh, the whole when we talk about this because this is a prime issue this is a prime issue health hazards the problem issues related to health they have uh, their incidence it has got enormously increased in the last two decades right so it's a very big challenge how to tackle this that's why uh, most of the countries 
world wide they have they have shifted what we can say there is a very uh, huge paradigm shift from the allopathic medicine or from the synthetic type of the medicine to the natural sources that is a plant based or herbal based system because the thing is that synthetic type of the drugs or what we can say allopathic type of the drugs they have a very huge adverse impact on the on the body of the human being apart from their their their, their ten, what we can say uh, ability to cure they have some other side, side effects also so those those side effects in fact uh, some of the time they they become very severe and they may cause the lethality in the long run so uh, factors as far as the factors are concerned population food habit climate change lifestyle genetic pollution already we have talked about major health problems cancer hypertension diabetes malaria viral dengue chikungunya and others besides this i mentioned alzheimer parkinson dental muscular dystrophy cystic fibrosis right so these are some of the disorders uh, what we can say we are where the incidence has got increased so now if you look at this the traditional system of the medicine it has to be certainly incorporated it has to be supplemented here to to what we can say get rid of this as far as the advantages some of the advantages of the medicinal and aromatic plants are concerned that is to over the traditional type of the cropping system so these are some of these particular what we can say advantages medicinal crops they provide better returns than the traditional crops they have very high domestic and export demand fetch better prices in the market right that will be depending upon because uh, here if we can explore the market certainly we are going to get a huge demand and huge premium price also for that could be stored for long time and sold at a time when better prices prevail in the market they are largely drought tolerant and that way they cannot be easily grazed by the animals so means they are more tolerant and uh, they can be grown in most of the lands even even such uh, what we can say harsh climates also they have low incidence of pest attack require minimum resources that's why the cost of cultivation it is also less in in comparison to the other type of the crops or what we can say field or the fruit crops uh it could be raised as a intercrop along with the traditional crop this is one of the very important point that uh, they can be grown as a intercrop also this thing as uh, what i'm telling you but in fact i just uh, in the very start of my talk just i talked about that in india if you look at the flora overall flora it is about near about 17500 species so out of this the 800 species they are used as medicinal plants by the tribal communities as a oral medication and uh, out of this you can see that ayurveda 900 species they are used they are known to be used for that for yunani 700 siddha 600 amchi 7 250 and modern type of the medicine there are mixed type of the medicine about 330 species so this way what i mean to say india has a very rich heritage of the this type of the medication system where the natural system herbs plants they are being used for the medication if you look at the different parts of the medicinal plants which are used so here the roots they comprise they constitute the maximum contribution 30% of the overall usage as far as the medicines or herbal medicines are concerned it is contributed by the roots 30% followed by the whole plant 16% then bark 14% and uh, likewise fruits leaves etc so friend this is the contribution this is the proportion if you look at the medicinal plants which are which are what we can say uh, used or which are uh, taken for the preparation of such medicine medicines herbal medicines so near about 10 to 20% of the medicines they only come from some organized cultivation whereas the remaining part of this it comes from the wild sources or what we can say the plants which are grown uh, themselves in the nature right so they are utilized for that and out of this if you look at the contribution so here the herbs they contribute the what we can say uh, the maximum part it is contributed by the herbs 32% uh, 
uh, followed by the shrubs uh, uh, trees 33 percent and uh, again shrubs 20 percent so this is way how the different uh, what we can say medicinal plants whether these are the herbs or trees or shrubs they are used for the medicine this is the distribution of our 10 biogeographic regions of india trans himalayas himalayan so in this case you can see here that uh, uh, as a whole trans himalayas and himalayan all together they constitute more than 3000 then uh, the western ghats 2000 deccan peninsula right 3000 and north east india 2000 this this way this is the distribution of the medicinal aromatic plants as far as their contribution is concerned so ACRIP map centers as the ICR it has a near about 22 such centers throughout the country right which uh, contribute for for what we can say the crop improvement as well as the crop production crop protection quality assessment post harvest management uh, friends this is the global market for the maps so uh, you can see here that uh, uh, if you look at the current scenario in 2023 the overall market trade it constitutes near about it contributes near about 6000 us billion dollar which is speculated which is likely to be increased by 8000 in 2030 10000 in 2050 so this way you can see here and china and india they are the world's leading exporters as far as the map based drugs are concerned and 80 percent of the world population they depend on traditional system of the medicines for primary health care this is friends about the area production and productivity of the medicinal plants right so uh, area as far as the area is concerned it is uh, 668 uh, uh, lakh 0.35 hectares production then the productivity it, it is less productivity as far as the productivity of uh, BAPS it is, concern, is concerned. It is less in India in comparison to China. So that's why there is a requirement to have some sort of organized type of the cultivation as well as organized type of the trade. This is a state-wise area production and productivity. Uh, this is uh, the area production and productivity of aromatic and medicinal plants. How over the years it has uh, what we can say increased or now it is what we can say it, 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 it is static right so but at the same time it is going to be increased this is a contribution of the various states as far as the percent area of aromatic and medicinal plants is concerned rajasthan contributes the maximum and as far as the percent wise production of aromatic and medicinal plants in india is concerned so this is uh, Madhya Pradesh which contributes uh, the maximum that is a 44 percent. Uh, friends this is uh, about the import and export of uh, uh, maps uh, as already I have talked about this maps only they have a value of near about 167.24 billion US dollar uh, with a compound annual growth rate of 5.40 and with a share as a percent as far as the total ayush exports are concerned they contribute 37.92 percent extracts they contribute near about 57.25 whereas medicants and medicaments they contribute near about 4.83 percent of the total percent of ayush exports now friends now we will talk about the crop improvement now we'll switch our to the crop improvement so whenever we talk about the crop improvement friends the crop improvement or the genetic improvement in any of the crop right it starts exactly from the mode of pollination right it first of all starts from the mode of pollination we must know that whether the crop is a cross pollinator or it is a cell pollinator or it is a often cross pollinator according to the mode of pollination the breeder they decide the strategy that what will be the strategy to go for breeding a particular trait right so this way if you look at this the cross pollination this much particular species they have been uh, what we can say already classified as the cross pollinator Ephedra sinicea, lavender agave marigold firebush red clow lemon uh, balm these are considered they have been uh, what we can say validated as a cross pollinator whereas the another they have uh, considered as the cell pollinator osimum bacillum including uh, sanctum sweet violet ruta uh, gabalans oregano opium that is a theme wild pansy jewel and as far as the aromatic plants are concerned not much what we can say such already 
it has not been unravelled many plants which which are considered to be aromatic plants for their the uh, mode of pollination still it is not known right so that's why it is a the it is a it is a biggest challenge as far as the genetic improvement improvement is concerned because one thing is that their mode of pollination and the second thing which is most important that is that uh, whenever we talk about the genetic improvement of any of the crop the reproductive biology of the crop that is very much important right what is the anthesis what is the outcrossing percent whether it is a highly cell pollinator what type of the phenomena it is having whether it is a protogyny or it is a protoendry whether it is a andromonosium or it is a gyne uh, uh, monosium what type of the plant system it is right so that type of the information it must be known to a plant breeder so friend these are some of the medicinal plants which are commercially stable for cultivation in india as far as the trade is concerned as far as the acreage under the cultivation is concerned it includes uh, andrographis paniculata kalbeg then uh, shatavri right it is used for the skytosomiasis and tuberculosis then uh, bacopa moneria brahmi it is uh, one of the medicinal plant which is used uh, uh, what we can say worldwide right as a one of the very important medicine medicinal plant for the memory for enhancing the memory right so uh, that is a bacopa uh, monieri so memory improvement insomnia epilepsy and as an anxiolytic insomnia means sleeplessness so it is it is used for that then chlorophytum rendinecum that is a sphed musli right leucorrhea and diabetes gloriosa superba superba that is a shank pushpi here the part plant part which is used uh, it is roots then it is used for the infertility open wounds right snake bite ulcers arthritis then gly uh, glyceriza glabra that is a jt mud or leco rice that is used for uh, as a anti tuc anti microbial anti oxidant anti inflammatory uh, type of the drug then gymnema silvestra right it is used for controlling the obesity or even for controlling the sugar also uh, then rofolfia serpentina sarpaganda it is also one of the very important medicine which is used for the problem like parkinson even alzimir and at the same time it is used uh, to treat the high blood pressure then tinospora cardifolia giloe very 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 important uh, medicinal plant which is apart from the bone fracture pain asthma it is very much used for the fevers also seasonal fevers also right so in the season of uh, seasonal fevers if you uh, routinely if you take this the chances are very less that we may be suffering from the fever now friends withani seminifera it is one of the very important medicinal plant as far as the infertility is concerned it enhances the fertility it enhances the what we can say vitality of the person apart from this it is also used against the diseases like alzimir parkinson so friend these are some of the major aromatic plants suitable for cultivation in india vetiver improved varieties they are to be used as they have lesser gestation period then lemon grass then citronella rosa grass citroda oil then pocholi then geranium then uh, jamarosa right these are some of the aromatic plants as far as the trade value as, as far as the product or for product formulations are concerned these are the most used aromatic plants in our country again these are some of the what we can say aromatic plants lavender peppermint rose eucalyptus uh, sandalwood right and uh, these are the major uh, parts which are used and the essential chemicals for which they are used right it includes the linalool then menthol citronella eucalyptol then patchouli alcohol right so uh, friend these are some of the uh, crops right uh, where uh, some of the varieties they have been released right and uh, major value which have been added to the products as well as the breeding method used so brahmi uh, subodak and uh, Uh, pragya shakti then sulsi gujarat anand basil one it has been uh, dulled by anand agriculture university then lemon grass od 19 sd 68 ci amata then uh, what we can say pama rosa right this 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 particular plant so it is uh, uh, th these are the varieties which have been dulled for this 
and uh, it is uh, developed by the clonal selection bringraj it is one of the component as a what we can say uh, oil for what we can say hair oil right so bringraj hair oil uh, micro propagation it, it has been this is a method which have been used to develop the variety then vetiver this one this is uh, used uh, as a vetiver oil collection from the n malabar followed by the selection so these are some of the method these are the friend threatened medicinal plants in india right uh, which uh, uh, which are a, a a type of or what we can say which are under the focus to be uh, preserved or to be conserved and for that uh, uh, the national gene bank or beside this uh, cmap is also having what we can say the germplasm center or what we can say such gene map beside this uh, there are many other uh, centers also uh, under the what we can say acrip system which 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 are considered or which have been what we can say managing this type of the threatened plants and uh, these are in fact very important plants uh, this is the list of priority species of medicinal plants for the cultivation right already we have talked about this and this is a detailed list of this so which includes ashwagandha ashok amla then brahmi gudmor then uh, kalihari kalmeg makoe sena stavari tulsi friend these are the important crops getting breeders attention which includes the isbol that is a plantago avata cassia angustifolia vithania somnifera Alu barbadens, asparagus, racemos, chatavri, then uh, chlorophytum that is uh, spade musli, paper longum, then plumago, rosia, solanum nigrum, then gymnia silvestri, right? These are some of the crops. Uh, now these are the major co general constraints. When we talk about the improvement, these are some of the constraints. One is a production constraint because uh, as far as the initial cost for the cultivation or the production is concerned uh, that that will be too high because we will requiring a processing will be requiring a processing technology for that uh, various equipments will be required so the initial cost which is required that will be higher so poor quality of inputs because here as such we are not having a very organized type of the cultivation system so the input uh, they will be of uh, poor quality then processing constraints as i talked about because there will be a delay in their supply lack of processing facilities high processing cost lack of distillation units near farm especially for the small farmers lack of information on grading specifications and is insufficient initiatives on value addition then of course the policy constraints procedural delays obtaining the loan high rate of interest no transparency in the trade and price lack of basic infrastructure and organized marketing system lack of awareness about export market so friend these are some of the as a whole constraints but now as such if you look at the current scenario government of india ayush mantralya it has taken a lot of initiatives where a lot of subsidies they are given a lot of subsidies they are given for for taking initiative for the cultivation of the medicinal aromatic plants and all those subsidies they are very well available on the website of what we can say national medicinal aromatic plant board as well as the website of ayush mantralya right anyone can assess that and uh, accordingly uh, the people they can be guided uh as far as the genetic improvement is concerned extent of genetic variability right now it is getting very much uh, less because uh, due to what uh, what we can say uh grazing or due to what we can say over exploitation by the people by the tribal people or by the people who are collecting such what we can say uh, herbs or shrubs from the natural sources from the wild sources right so they are not cultivating only this is a sort of mining they are uh, just uh, what we can say uh, uh, harvesting the material from there so knowledge of the reproductive biology as already we have talked about information of the genetic traits of the agronomic interest information of genetic pathways of the secondary metabolism right so as far as as we know that most of these uh, uh, 
uh, what we can say constituents they are the secondary metabolites right so we do not know the metabolic pathways if we can get to know about the metabolic pathways and at the same time if we can develop some of the cell line culture also so so under the in vitro conditions also we can go for the plant tissue culture like uh, cell suspension culture and from there we can extract those particular secondary metabolites so as such till today we do not know we most of these more than what we can say 95% of this they have not been fractionated they have not been fractionated by the instruments like uh, lcms ms right where we do not know that what is the actual composition and which and in which proportion they are present in the plant so this is one of the what we can say very important tasks which are required to be done and the at the same time these we 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 require a very massive chemotyping we we require a massive chemotyping that what is the actual which chemical constituent is uh, uh, it is more in which particular genotype so once if we can identify the genotype on the basis of their composition on the basis of their constitution right that this particular constituent this is more in this particular genotype then accordingly we can we can fetch more premium for that we can use those particular parents for our breeding program at the same time we can utilize those we can multiply them we can utilize those for our what we can say industry purpose also so that way information uh, of genetic pathways breeding strategies as we do not know the reproductive biology we do not know the exact mode of pollination so that's why the breeding strategies they are not very much defined lack of novel high yielding plant varieties enriched in quality traits as well as biotic and abiotic stress tolerance so since uh, there is a strong need to elevate them under the biotic and abiotic stresses also to identify that which genotypes they are actually better then friends non availability of quality seed and planting materials and their standards availability of efficient analytical techniques for quality trait improvement no proper database of collection as well as the genome is available now some of the genomes even have been sequenced also let us suppose uh, uh, the genome of tulsi it has been sequenced the whole genome it has been sequenced by uh, cmap right so that way now the ngs it's what we can say it's ugs it can be done to unravel the whole what we can say the genome or what we can say the mystery of the genes which is lying behind any of the uh, trait in, in in a particular plant system now that can be what we can say done uh, comparatively easily so these are the research strategies which 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 have been uh, what we can say uh, advised to go for this the first one basic needs for the improvement it includes the introduction and selection right so it includes we will we will what we can say introduce the type we will introduce a good genotype from from any of the place uh, it may be exotic it may be ind indigenous we can evaluate them and after the evaluation we can select a particular better one and we can go for the multiplication and we can go for the propagation the second one is the chemotyping and selection because chemotyping it is very much very very much required as far as the medicinal aromatic plants are concerned because what happens let me tell you that uh, even the same under the same species let us suppose withania somnifera there are different species of withania also withania somnifera is there withania uh, cobulans is also there under the same species of withania somnifera if some of the cultivars which are which are grown in gujarat or which are grown in jammu kashmir or which are grown in himachal pradesh or which are uh, native to tamil nadu or which are native to northeast so their their chemical composition their uh, what we can say uh, constitution they may be differing because they have been evolved here for the for thousands of the years they have been evolved here and they have accumulated a particular type of the secondary metabolite more in quantum in 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 interaction against the interaction with the environmental factors these are the biotic or maybe the abiotic so that way the chemotyping it is very much important so conventional method friend pure line selection pedigree method bulk method these are some of the normal breeding method which were generally used and uh, as far as the advanced methods so we can go for the qtl mapping integration 
marker resistance selection, transgenic development for secondary metabolites, and genome editing. Friends, just I'll be emphasizing, I'll take two minutes on this particular slide because this is a very important slide whenever we talk about the breeding, breeding a particular trait. So, a breeder as a student of PhD, as a student of masters or any of the person who is involved in the breeding, we must know that uh, which particular breeding technique in which particular situation which we go for. Let us suppose friends, if uh, if it is a, if, if we are having some type of the land race and the crop is a cell pollinated in nature. So in that particular case, we consider it, it will be a mixture of many pure lines. So in that particular case, the technique like pure line selection, right, that can be considered very useful, right. So at the same time, if look at, if, if let us suppose if a particular variety, it has been developed almost 20 years back, 30 years back, right. So to improve that variety or to purify that variety, because due to what we can say 20 years of its development, so a number of the admixtures, some, some type of what we can say, uh, admixture might have come, some outcrossing might have come. So to purify that variety, we must go for the mass selection. It may be the negative mass selection, it may be the positive mass selection. That is a technique which we should follow to purify a particular existing variety. Then friends, apart from this, the bulk method or the, what we can say, uh, the pedigree method. These are the methods whenever uh, we have to develop a particular variety, we have to exploit the transgressive segregation or transgressive variation, right? So in that particular case, we use, make use of these type of the techniques, especially the pedigree method technique, where uh, we want to identify a particular recombinant, which, which must be better than both the parents, right? So in that particular case, we can go for the a bulk method, we can go for the pedigree method. Pedigree method is considered to be better than the bulk method because the, due to many, what we can say, well-known factors. Then friends, if let us pose a particular variety, it is already existing variety, it is already existing well-known genotype and that genotype is lacking only in one character. Let us suppose if its days to maturity is 140 days and if you want to make it which uh, earlier maturing, if you want to convert this into a genotype, Type which can be grown, which can mature in 120 days. So in that particular case, we can go for the back crossing also, right? We have to identify a particular genotype whose, uh, what we can say, days to maturity is near about 110 days, 120 days. We can use it as, as one of the donor parent to what we can say contribute uh, or to introduce those particular gene which can bring the uh, maturity earlier, right? So this is how we can go for the what we can say the back cross breeding, then recurrent selection. This is for the population improvement. Already there is a less genetic variability. We want more recombination. We want more genetic combination in that particular case. We can go for the what we can say a technique like uh, uh, recombinant selection. Then mutation breeding, of course, uh, uh, variability because uh, in most of the cell pollinated crops where we are having a very less variability in that particular crop, certainly we must, uh, this is a way how we can go for the, what we can say, inducing the variability. And even when we talk about the genome editing also, it is also one form of the site directed, it is, it is in fact a, what we can say, way to generate the mutation only. This is a site directed mutagenesis where the guide RNA, it will help you to induce a mutation at a particular target with the help of the CRISPR-Cas9, right? So that way we can go for it. Then gene pyramiding, when we have to introduce, accumulate more desirable genes for the different traits into a single background, we can go for it. Then clonal selection, when we have to go for when we require to produce some of the two to type and out of that, uh, we have to select some of the best one. Then friends, certainly when I just, we were talking in the what previous, this when the Viva was going on, we were talking about that uh, now when uh, the NGS and the sequencing tools, they have become very much what we can say uh, handy to use as well as they have become cheaper. If uh, let us suppose take an example of Gujarat, Gujarat Biotechnology Research Center, GBRC is there, it is run by the state government. Now if we have to sequence uh, near about 24 samples, 24 uh, samples, 24 genotypes, it will cost you near about only 18,000 rupees, right? So 18,000 rupees by making use of what they can, they can uh, sequence your uh, 18 sample for a particular gene, 
right so that way what i mean to say now it has become very much uh, uh, cheaper and even we can outsource also right there is no what we can say requirement to generate or to develop such type of the very very what we can say uh, costly uh, instrumentation or lab facilities everywhere if the usage is very much less anywhere we can also outsource those particular things from some other agency also so now this qtl mapping integration uh, we can map certainly some of those particular what we can say linked qtls which are associated with the trait of interest and we can try to integrate them into a desired background transgenic development and genome editing of course then present breeding status medicinal plant varieties as a whole if you look at the acrip medicinal plants 22 species we have developed uh, 33 varieties in case of aromatic plants out of uh, in nine six species seven varieties have been developed if we we'll take an example of cmap medicinal plants in 20 species 25 varieties have been developed whereas 42 varieties have been developed in 18 species of the aromatic plants these are some of the varieties which have been developed by anand agriculture university which includes uh, uh, gujarat anand kwar patha it is a uh, alu barbadens then uh, gujarat uh, anand ashugandha gujarat anand basil gujarat anand sena then uh, anand uh, kal meg one anand sved musli gujarat selio gujarat is gold these are some of the very popular variety which have been developed by anand agriculture university and in fact the farmers of gujarat they are making use of this and a lot of uh, what we can say farmers even especially from the area of kutch from the area of sovrash they are exporting the product of these to germany to some of the european union also european nation also so that what i actually uh, wanted to convey here uh, this is the best acrip uh, center award which has been uh, what we can say earned by our university so these are the released varieties in medicinal plants as a whole uh, in case of kal meg then uh, asparagus satavri then uh, bacopa brahmi these are the various varieties which have been uh, developed in the different crops like uh, shank pushpi leco rice jt mad madunashini giloi ashugandha then friend these are some the mandate crops of the what we can say dmapr that is a directorate of for medicinal aromatic plants which is also situated in the anand district only it is nearby our uh, anand agriculture university so these are the mandate crops which include yellow barbadens with any feminifera then comnifora uh, pyti uh, uh, then plantago then uh, uh, cymopogon then pinospora then uh, cymopogon martini then uh, chlorophytum then cassia then uh, these are the varieties which again tell the map varieties medicinal aromatic plants then uh, again these are the varieties which have been done up with the different crop uh, uh, this is the status of uh, medicinal aromatic plants conservation in the gene banks this is uh, generally through the long term storage so in case of cultivated 2320 in case of wild 2316 and these are the various what we can say <coughs> plants or crops which which have been what we can say with a sizable variability they have been uh, conserved uh this is the germplasm status of uh, the dmpr here about 1900 uh, 91 uh, different uh, species uh, uh, genotypes they have been uh, what we can say uh, maintained that uh, dmpr vorabi of all these mandate crops these are the elite pgrs which are registered with the nbpgr right so this much number of the uh what we can say such plant genetic resources they have been already registered uh this is the conservation uh, we, for, as for uh, as we do the conservation for other crops it can also be conserved with a in situ or ex situ right so uh, then this is about the breeding of bithania seminifera right so uh, breeding block it is in case of ashugandha and uh, some of the male strain line for the first time they have been identified in case of ashugandha and uh, this uh, already we have uh, discussed that it is one of the very important uh, valuable medicinal plant which has uh, multiple benefits as far as the health ailments are concerned bacterial infection liver tonic astringent antioxidant adaptogen aphrodisiac anti inflammatory cancer 
so these are the genotypes from using ashwagandha lines which have been identified uh, this is a dwarf ashwagandha line which has been uh, what we can say uh, developed through pure line this is a new progamin type of uh, ashwagandha which is which is having a spreading type and its root uh, in fact uh, yield is uh, quite high this is uh, what i was talking about for the first time the male stride line it has been identified in case of ashwagandha and the same can be uh, what we can say exploited for the hybrid seed production also this is how they both are differing as far as uh, the pollen germination is concerned pollen germination in case of uh, male stride stigma this is the here this is no pollen germination on selfing right uh because it is a male stride line but when the pollen has been taken from other source so this uh, what we can say the pollen uh, tube it has germinated showing here that uh, this particular line it is a male stride line and the pollen tube it is reaching to the ovary so that way it is a validation that it is a male stride line by by looking at uh, the pollen tube growth as well as what we can say doing the selfing so these are the pollinators in male stride plants including the ants house flies honey bees uh, and uh, here the meiosis it was normal in case of a male stride line and uh, uh, this is this is about the growth study in ashwagandha right so after 90 days it was due to uh, steadily increase here the growth pattern they were also studied that how the growth vegetative growth as well as the reproductive growth uh, it takes place so very slow growth takes place in the initial period up to 75 days whereas steadily increase from 90 to what we can say 150 days the initial dry matter increase there was due to root and leaves whereas after 90 days the dry matter that was due to what we can say fruits and leaves so friends uh, this is about the chemical changes which takes place during the growth uh, it is about the deoxy withanostromanolide and withanolide a content so young roots they had more uh, 12 deoxy withanolide from uh, nolide and uh, withanolide a content per unit root weight so during maturity the content of active ingredients they in fact uh, it uh, it was found to be decreased so these are some of the dust descriptors which have been identified uh for this particular plant uh, which includes plant height plant type branching pattern root branching pattern then calyx attachment with berry calyx tip berry shape calyx covering berry then leaf shape leaf margin leaf color leaf size and leaf curling uh this is about the variability of the plant type there is a lot of variability as far as the morphology and the genetic variability is concerned in case of uh, uh, ashwagandha Uh, it is about the variability for the leaf character you will find the spreading drooping or what we can say the small leaf plant large leaf plant flattened shrinken curled one extra dwarf open type calyx cluster flower less flower progamin type less fibrous root more hairy so this is the variability for the berry color you can find here the yellow colored berry then the creamy white then the red apart from that orange so a uh, lot of variability has been found as far as the berry is concerned genetics of the berry color and growth habit is also it was uh, studied so induction of the shoot bud from the nodal ex plants proliferation of the shoot this is a in vitro regeneration protocol it has been optimized for uh, what we can say this particular plant so it is about the isbgol breeding in this case uh, out of 80 84 is bugol germplasm sessions they are being maintained and uh, these are the various species which have been maintained uh, standardized uh, the hybridization procedure already it has been standardized because in case of isbgol the flower uh, is so what we can say small because uh, till recently it was even not known whether it is a cell pollinator crop or it is a cross pollinator crop and in fact anand agriculture university is the first university who has sequenced the whole genome of the is a goal uh, by unraveling all all the what we can say ssr as well as the est based ssrs so uh, this is uh, the plantago abata germplasm uh, two varieties they have been developed uh, dpo dpo1 and dpo4 in fact these two varieties they have been developed by the dmapr so an early maturing and high harvest index uh, is goal mutant uh it 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 is identified 
so this is the golden yellow leaf mutant this is one of the mutant which has been identified and uh, uh, what we can say as far as it's uh, what we can say uh, seed type is concerned it is also very much what we can say prominent there is a prominent difference in that also and uh, as well as the nutritional component is concerned it is also differing so close this is about the close flower mutant and whitish leaf base and stem short leaf with twisted leaf uh, tip short leaf with tight so this is a huge variability uh, as far as the morphological or reproductive or what we can say flower morphology is concerned uh, this is the some of the sources uh, which are resistant for the downy mildew they have been identified uh, downy mildew resistant sources as i am talking about so this is about the physiological study of the small mist mutant lines it is also it has been what we can say studied that how they differ in, the, in 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 a condition like irrigated condition as well as under the drought condition so the leaf water potential of small lines they were that was uh, what we can say estimated at saturated soil moisture and the water deficit conditions uh tetraploids they have been developed in case of is goal and out of the total 97 Uh, lines screen for the plidy level the semtil lines they have been found to be having the double plidy level so that was uh, what we can say estimated through the flow cytometry so this is in fact the data mining and development uh, this is for the first time it is done by nanda agriculture university uh, that it has been sequenced through ngs and uh, est all the est based ss markers they have been uh, made public uh, for to be used by any of the uh, person transcriptome analysis it also also been done in case of uh, plantago where the different type of the genotypes as far as that they are uh, chemotype is concerned they have been evaluated and uh, what we can say uh, important uh, what we can say interpretations important uh, findings they have been made out of that uh, this is when we go for the transcriptional analysis we have to go for the what we can say uh, gene ontology as well as the functional notation we have to assign a particular function to all the transcripts to all the genes which we have identified it is about the shatavari asparagus racemo germplasm which has been successfully maintained it is the gymnema sylvestre germplasm this is a high fruit producing madhunashini germplasm one of the very what we can say particular as far as yield uh, contributing traits are concerned this is desmodium gangeticum uh, these are some of the what we can say physiological studies made uh, this is about the asparagus uh, adsidens asparagus racemosus this is about the gymnema sylvestre and friends uh, the last if you we'll look at uh, the what we can say overall usage right so herbal remedies for staying healthy right especially when we talk about the hypertension diabetes cancer dengue these are the various what we can say medicinal plants which have been identified which have been validated and which are very much under use for making many many type of such what we can say products whether these are the medicines let us suppose for hypertension google that is a commonly for it uh, then sarpaganda ravelfia serpentina then terminilla species they have been what we can say identified diabetes momajo that is a and gurmar they have been uh, what we can say identified and even these now they have been uh, what we can say advocated by world health organization who also right so for cancer kokum species anona anona because anona as such it is a what we can say it, it these are the species of the custard apple anona squamosa anona reticulata anona cherry moya anona what we can say uh, reticulata cherry moya ati moya and uh, there are four species right so uh, most of these species they also have a very huge medicinal value right especially when we what we can, can say talk about the immunomodulation so kalmeg ashwagandha they work for the immunomodulation and uh, when we talk about the dengue right so uh, most of the people they know that uh, the extract of the papaya leaves especially it is very much used then malaria uh, for this artemisia women health shatavari it is a well known what we can say medicinal plant and uh, uh, composition it is composition for almost all the what we can say such uh, drugs which are made for the uh, well being of the women
then parkinson elzemir wilbert beans and apart from that uh, uh, sarp ganda even uh, ashwagandha also they are being used for this then as far as the laxative is concerned is goal it is used for time immemorial by the households as a laxative then sina cassia angustifolia right it is also what we can say considered to be one of the very highly laxative what we can say product so as a whole i'd like to conclude here medicinal aromatic crops they are now being considered as a important commercial item right now they are important commercial item and at the same time they can fetch a very huge premium price if you if the people they go for the cultivation one of the major limitation for their cultivation for their adoption is that there is not uh, uh much proper awareness among the growers and many people they they what we can say uh, they are not that much open minded to adopt this they are they uh, they what we can say they are very much scared that uh, what will happen if they would they won't get a what we can say some market and at the same time uh, there is not a very much organized market also for this so that those particular things they have to be strengthened they have to be channelized streamlined to meet the demand of prominent industries producing herbal drugs pharmaceutical cosmetics nutraceutical other confectionery items has become imperative to produce the quality raw materials uh medicinal plants and their products are derivatives they are looked upon not only as a source of affordable health care but also as an important co commodity item for the international trade and commerce right already we have well uh, talked about the what we can say global herbal market then how the india is playing a very important role in that the medicinal plants related trade is growing rapidly every year but india's share in the global market is not very uh, impressive as a as a whole if we, if we'll talk about the what we can say uh, most of the crops right only few crops india is focusing right now right of if 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 india can bring more other crops also under this particular trade then uh, what we can say its contribution that is from second it it may go what what we can say very much higher than the china also then their dismissal situation warranted to further gear up research and development activities in the area these are some of the future challenges already we have talked about extent of genetic variability knowledge of the reproductive biology information on the genetics of the agronomic traits then conservation of map species novel varieties of map with high yield and quality and resistant to biotic and biotic stresses they are required to be developed standards for better quality seed and planting material of map they are uh, need of the hour technology of mass multiplication and planting material are required to be validated required to be optimized technologies for enhanced biosynthesis and production of active principal compounds of map this is in fact the chemo typing are making use of some what we can say instrumentation like uh, lcms lcms ms for the fractionation to know about that what are actually what is the overall composition what at the secondary metabolite or at the at the, at the level of different what we can say constitute components of those pole plants elucidation and engineering of biosynthetic pathways Uh, of various active principal compounds of map so these are some of the what we can say area uh, what we can say areas or what we can say domains are these are the challenges uh, which are to be what we can say resolved while while uh, while going in the direction of what we can say a guru or what we can say a leading country as far as the uh, control as well as the contribution in the global trade of the herbal products or herbal medicines concerned so friends uh, with all this i i conclude here and uh, i uh, i am very much thankful for a very patient hearing everyone uh, uh, what we can say listening the things very keenly here and for sitting here all together for one hour right if you, now you want to uh, what we can say ask anything or even if you want to supplement if you want to adapt anything you are most welcome uh, in fact see you are very much important markers as far as the availability of the marker is concerned it is less but see at the same time the avenues which now have been opened let us suppose now the use of ngs it has become very much affordable right markers can be developed for any of the crop right markers can be developed for any of the crop once you have sequenced the marker automatically you'll get all type of the snp once you have sequenced the genome automatically you'll get all type of the marker information whether these are the ssr based or these are the snp based right 
and at the same time at a very preliminary stage you we can also go for the cross species amplification also cross species amplification let us suppose if i am talking about the ashwagandha it belongs to the solanaceae fam solanaceous family right it, it is a solanaceae family right so if you can use the marker from some other crop of the solanaceae family so certainly it has been found that most of in most of the cases these marker they work very well right so in a case if uh, one does not want to go as such for the sequencing and uh, such what we can say funding is not available so cross species amplification is also very much being used even i am talking about the cross species amplification it is some of the time cross genus amplification of the markers cross uh, it, 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 it is also what we can say it as world right so that way the markers which have worked in what we can say in other solanaceous crops also they can also be utilized right and uh, at the same time we'll have to first of all streamline our breeding strategies also because i told you in 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 few crops the mode of pollination is known but in few crops it has it is not even the mode of pollination is not known right so from where the breeder has to start the work first of all its mode of pollination its reproductive biology right the type of uh, the flower the type of the floral morphology it must be known what type of the anthesis at what time the anthesis takes place what type of the uh, floral uh, buds arrangement is there right what type of the style is there stigma is there how many anthers are there so there are many things which are yet to be what we can say uh, explored but let us suppose when we talk about the major major medicinal plants which include uh, as i as i emphasize something on what we can say 10 to 12 crops like shatavari like ashwagandha like uh, isbol like uh, 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 what we can say brahmi like uh, uh, madhunashini rai right, shankh pushpi right so these particular crops uh, even tulsi right so these particular crops even they can be taken up for the sequencing also already the genome of tulsi it has been sequenced so we can go for the sequencing the moment we have sequenced it right we that that particular information that can be available for everyone because uh, the moment you sequence the genome it becomes what we can say available to uh, everyone right because that will be in the ncbi the whole sequence will be in the ncbi and that uh, type of the information it can be utilized by anyone after that right and uh, secondly as i told you one of the very important parameter is the chemotyping because uh, we do not know the now when when i, I told you that the china is exceeding or the china china is uh, a hit to india the reason for this is that here the trade or the product which is used for the trade product which is developed for the trade it comes it is developed from the raw material which comes through a very unorganized type of the way right the tribal people the farmer pe farmers they just uh, collect such plants from some wild sources right so as a result of that there may not be all or there may not be uniform uniformity as far as their chem chemical composition is concerned so if we can go for the cultivation first of all if we can chemo 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 type a uh, huge number of the germplasm genotypes we can come up with the 3 4 5 best genotypes then we can go for the cultivation of that right then certainly the quality of our product that is going to be enhanced and that is uh, what we can say that can make us to fetch uh, more premium price at the global level fine so if there is no query even uh, if anyone wants to interact you can even mail me you can even call me also right thank you dr agash parikar just to add an information that in our uh, department of medicine and aromatic plants we have a collection of uh, tinospora cardiofolia okay then, giloy uh, solanum suratans also we have okay and then uh, students have done work wherein that i was a member of the advisory committee if you have time then you can make a visit to our department of medicine and aromatic plants also before leaving from chennai certainly certainly i'd like to visit now i'd like to visit yes yes ah. of course thank you okay. thank you if no more questions i thank uh, dr agash parigar from au anand who had been with us uh, for the whole day because he traveled uh, from such a long distance of from uh, anand 
for uh, having the vivacity of uh, Anand Lakshmi, and followed by that he had enlightened. Uh, though the crops were different, the crops which were not exposed to us, probably the agricultural scientists uh, who are undergoing plant breeding discipline, scientists as well as students. But the common procedures that which is being followed in all the crops are similar. and this is the area which we have to necessarily explore because there are several areas uh, dust characters have not been finalized in these crops pollination mechanisms then um, <coughs> like he said that uh, uh, how much time the pollen will be viable how when the stigma will be receptive all those things which need to be taken care of and one of those students especially who has collected the stenospora cardifolia from all the areas of tamil nadu okay he was looking after all these parameters also okay and the solanum suratens the student who worked in that solanum suratens he solanes in that uh, alkaloid she was estimating using gcms and we have a very good facility which had been established at uh, department of medicine and aromatic plants with the support of uh, state planning commission okay okay you can make a visit and thanks a lot and then i am thankful to the Mm, dean uh, in charge uh, school of post graduate studies dr sendil and then dr ravi geshavan director center for plant breeding and genetics dr kalai magal president of the department of genetics and plant breeding my classmate dr rajeshwari pg coordinator and all the people who have joined with us online offline and the students uh, you have made the day a great day thanks to you also okay thanks sir thank you, thank thank you, you sir thank you one and all thank you very much.